Welcome to a short tutorial on how to record your audio and video. Notice I have both photo booth and garage band open. I select acoustic instrument from the new project list. I give the project a name that will be easy to find later and make sense to my partners. Next I want to look at the settings and make sure that I've chosen the tempo, the signature, and the key that my partners and I have agreed on. The tempo is probably the most important one here. Click the Create button and it will open a new project for you. Make sure you have the metronome turned on and that you have your earbuds or headphones on so that you hear the, the metronome as you are recording. Then go to Photo Booth and make sure that your screen is adjusted so that you can see yourself playing the instrument and click on Record. Return to GarageBand and begin recording. Begin playing your instrument and when you're finished, click on Stop. Then go back to Photo Booth and click on Stop there. You have recorded your audio and video. You're finished. Thank you for watching. A screencast is like making a video, only instead of using a camera, you record what's on the screen of your computer. If you have a Mac computer, you probably have all the tools you need built right in to make your own screencasts. I'm going to show you how. First, we need to find a program called QuickTime Player. So we're going to open a Finder window and go to our Applications folder and look inside of our Applications folder for that program called QuickTime Player. And we'll go ahead and open that. Now, QuickTime Player is open, but you don't see anything on the screen. That's because we need to start a new recording. If you click on the File menu, you see some options here, and one of them is New Screen Recording. Click New Screen Recording, and you see this fun little menu. Before we start our recording, there are a couple of options that you can choose from this little triangle right here. First, you can choose which sound input you want to use, none or the built-in sound system. Uh, pro tip here, if you have the headphones from your cell phone that have a built-in microphone, you can plug them into your Mac and you can probably use those as a microphone. That's what I'm using right now. The other option here is to show mouse clicks in the recording. And that will show a little highlight if you click on something, which is helpful if you're showing or demonstrating how to do something on the computer. The mouse clicks highlight what is being done so that the attention of the viewer is drawn to it. So with that done, we'll go ahead and click the record button and when we click record, it comes and tells us that we can click once to record the full screen, or we can drag to record only part of the screen. That's if we wanted to show only a certain part of the screen, we could draw a window like this and then click inside it to start recording. For our purposes though, I want to show you how to record the full screen. So I'm gonna hit escape to cancel that, and then start another recording. And this time we're going to click once to record the full screen. You'll also notice it says end recording by clicking the stop button in the menu bar. We'll see that in just a minute. Uh, up here is a little stop button, but once you've started recording, you may wonder, okay, now what do I do? And if you don't locate this little menu item before you start recording, it can be kind of confusing. So now we're all set. I'm going to click and we are now recording and making a screencast. So I will go through here and show you how to do what it is I want to show you. I'm just kind of messing around here. Um, actually, I do want to demonstrate one cool feature. Uh, if you have a Mac, you may not know about the zoom feature that's built in that lets you zoom in on parts of the screen so you can see them better, and I'm going to show you how to enable that. So go to the menu, the Apple menu in the upper left-hand corner, go to System Preferences, and then click on Accessibility, which is down here. Under Accessibility, there is a feature called Zoom, and if you check this box right here that says Use Scroll Gesture with Modifier Key to Zoom, by default, it's the control key. It will let you do something like this. So if I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard now and then zoom, zoom uh, with the scroll gesture, which is dragging with two fingers by default. But if you have a wheel mouse, it will you can use that as well. And this is what happens. You can zoom in really close on part of the screen. You can then move around and see things. This is nice if you're looking at something really small and you just want to temporarily zoom in on it. If you're displaying something on a projector and want to make it bigger for people temporarily without messing with font sizes and things, it's kind of fun to be able to scroll in and out like that. And QuickTime Player, as it's recording a screencast, uh, making a screen recording, 
We'll also record that zoom, so it can be kind of helpful. If you're recording full screen, sometimes it can be hard to see individual elements, especially if the video is played back later at a smaller size. So I'm going to go ahead and click the stop button on QuickTime Player, and you'll notice that it has popped up a window called Untitled for our video. This is the raw video file that QuickTime Player has made for us, has recorded for us, and it's not very useful for our purposes because we need to get this somewhere like YouTube to be able to let other people view it and watch it. So we're going to export and compress this video that we just made. So I go to the File menu in QuickTime Player, and then I choose Export, and you'll see you're given a bunch of choices here. These are different resolutions or sizes for the video. 480p basically means it'll be 480 lines or 480 pixels tall. 720p or 1080p are going to make for bigger, higher resolution videos where it's much more clear on the screen what you see, but the video files are going to be bigger and can sometimes take a little bit longer to stream or to play. So it's a trade-off. You can make a higher quality video, but it's going to be a much larger file and can sometimes present problems on playback, whereas a smaller video like 480p or optimized for an iPhone or an iPod like that uh, size will be much smaller and quicker to load and to show but can be a little bit harder to see. It will be reduced quality. So for our purposes, we're going to make this 720p. And it's going to come up and ask where we want to save this. I'd like to save my things on the desktop, so I'm just going to call this screencast test and then save the file. I'm actually going to take the space out of that uh, because uploading files to different web services, sometimes they aren't happy when there's a space. One thing you'll see um, is that it is taking a while to chew on this video. This was a relatively short video we made. It was only a couple of minutes long. Um, this work of compression takes this really high quality screen recording that you made and really does a number on it. It crunches it down to make it look good, but fit into a really small file type. Um, if you've ever worked with video before, you know that this step can take a while. So I'm sort of basically uh, vamping and filling time right here until that menu bar gets full. Um, once this is done, you can really do anything you want to with this file. It's going to be compressed down. Um, it's going to be a standard MP4 video file, so you can upload it to YouTube, which I'll show in just a second, or Vimeo or any other service that you have that you would like to use to make a screencast. Um, there are some services out there that are dedicated to, um, to hosting screencasts, and you can use those. Um, one other consideration, uh, as we just saw popping in there, and as we heard the noises, is to disable anything on your computer that you don't want to record. Um, if you're making a screencast, turn off your instant messaging program like I didn't. Uh, turn off Skype and your email program and anything else that's going to pop up or make a noise and show up on the screen that you may not want to show. Okay, now that this is done, we're going to go ahead and close QuickTime Player. And we see here, this is our video file. Uh, the video file itself is about 47 megabytes. Zoom in a little closer, closer so you can see that. And for a video file, that's a pretty big. It's a minute and a half long, 47 megabytes. It's not huge. That's about the right size to upload to YouTube or something. But this isn't the kind, you're not going to be able to make great big long video files and email them around to people. So we're going to hop over to YouTube, and I'm not going to do the full upload. But this is where you would then take the video that you just made and say, I want to upload this to your service and then it will upload it. You can fill in your title and information and then publish it as you see fit. So I hope this was an interesting look at the tools that you have on your Mac built in to do screencasting, and I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Welcome to a tutorial on how to make a Linux screencast. I'm running Ubuntu 12.04 64-bit right now. It's a fresh installation. I just ran sudo apt-get update and upgrade, so those run uh, and don't find anything new. What I'm going to do is install two packages called gtk record my desktop and dvd. So I'm going to clear the screen here and do sudo apt-get install gtk record my desktop. That's the first package, that's the screen recorder, and then dvd. So together, these two packages will allow me to first record the 
uh, screencast to a file called OGV extension and then DVD will allow me to translate it to a high resolution AVI. I could upload the OGV file directly to YouTube but it wouldn't be as high quality so that's the purpose in transcoding it to AVI. Alright so once these are finished here uh, we have two new applications. The first if we open up our dashboard is record my desktop and for convenience I'm just gonna paste that to my my launch launcher not necessary but just for convenience and I'm gonna do the same for DVD so now these two applications will always be there uh, yes alright so now in record my desktop I'm gonna get rid of that for a bit we're gonna look at the advanced settings under performance we want to have about 15 frames per second no compression and full shots every frame. This is important so that the uh, video quality remains high. And then sound and miscellaneous will just leave alone. Uh, they seem to be working pretty well in Ubuntu these days. So these are the, the two settings we need. Zero compression, full shots every frame, 15 frames per second is a setting. And we're going to just keep video quality high, sound quality high. Now once we have all that set we could do two things. The first is record and that'll just do a full screen uh, recording of the entire session. So we'll, we'll give a quick example of that. So here's the, it just disappears and this turns into a red square for recording. And then when we're done, let's say we'll, we'll do something exciting here like open up a terminal and then we're going to re stop recording that. And then what it's doing is it's encoding that to an OGV file. Now the default installation uh, of that is just going to place it into our home directory. So here you'll see the OGV file just appeared. Alright, so we'll close that for now. Quit. And that red dot went away. So now we've got our OGV file. We could play this with Movie Player and it shows uh, what happened during the screen record. You can see it playing back here. And we could upload that to YouTube, but I want a higher quality version of it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up DVD and we're going to make a new DivX MPEG-4 file. And we're just going to drag that video into DVD. And then we're going to go to the Properties and under Advanced I'm going to select the final size of 1920 by 1080. So this will give us the highest resolution that YouTube supports. We're going to keep the aspect ratio 4 to 3. We'll say OK here. And then we'll do forward. This is going to make a new folder called movie, which doesn't currently exist. That's fine. And then we're not going to shut down the computer. We're just going to keep going. So now this is the screen that uh, is showing us the progress of the translate the transcoding from OGV to uh, AVI. So it took about 18 seconds. Obviously, the longer the original file, the longer the transcoding is going to take. And we're going to quit from that. Yes. All right. So now we've got a new folder here called Movie. So in that, that's our movie. I'm just going to place it back in the parent directory. I'll get rid of the original there. So now we've got Movie.AVI. So the name didn't stay the same. But we'll play this. Looks to be about the same. So that's that's fine. And then we're gonna open up YouTube and upload it. I'll just fire up Firefox here. Go to YouTube. Oop, not YouTube. And we'll have to sign in. go to the upload button and we're going to select that AVI file. So in our home directory we're just going to take this, the AVI. That right, should be very fast. Call it my first video. And then I always like to categorize it as education. We'll make it public and we'll Creative Commons. Alright, 
So now we're done. We'll go look at it. Initially here, the, the screen quality won't be as high uh, until it gets done fully transcoding it. But YouTube takes a little while to render it. All right, so now we're going to go back. We're done with that. And we're going to show one more thing, which is how to record just a, a partial screen. So let's say I wanted to only look at this window during my screen casting. I'm going to go back to record my desktop. And this time, instead of hitting record, I'm going to say select. I'm not going to select that window because that doesn't seem to work very well but I can just drag and drop holding down the left mouse key highlighting the window I'm interested in then I'll minimize this and now I can hit record now I'm recording only within this black box here which is bounded so I can do all my normal stuff all right and then I'm done and again, you have to go through the transcoding process, and then eventually that'll end back up here as a new OGV file, which again, you'd have to enter into DVD to transcode to a higher resolution API file.